Hey everyone, it's Mark Ferguson doing another virtual real estate video. We're in Upland again, kind of a virtual real estate game, sort of, like Monopoly. And um, we're gonna talk about the Bronx opening versus Berkeley opening. So Upland has different cities that open up. You can mint properties or buy properties, resell them, and it's a pretty exciting time. So we filmed um, what we did in Berkeley as we were doing it. We have that in a previous video. That was pretty crazy. I did partake in the Bronx opening, but I didn't film that one. It's kind of before I started this channel. But we're going to talk about both of my strategies and compare them. And then the collection is coming up for Berkeley tomorrow, or the collection notice. So we'll talk about that as well. That's where Upland announces what the collections will be within those cities, and that can make your properties much more valuable or less valuable as well. So I'm going to talk about those strategies. And of course, we love it when you like our channel. Leave comments. New subscribers love having you here. And I have a real real estate channel as well, Mark Ferguson Invest for More, where we do lots of flips and rental properties. I own a brokerage in real life as well. All right, so you're looking right here at the Bronx, where I did buy a lot of properties a few weeks ago. And I had a much different strategy in the Bronx than I did in Berkeley. I'm gonna talk about that real quick and how it worked and didn't work. So in the Bronx, I minted a lot of properties. Um, they had lots of different openings and stress tests, which were kind of weird. They had a stress test in Berkeley. Um, I think they had one in Baychester. Um, was there another one in Pelham Gardens? It was, it was all over the place, and I think it caused a lot more problems than it really helped, but you had to deal with it anyway. So I ended up with properties in Kingsbridge, Baychester, all over here during those stress tests. And then when the whole city opened up, we bought properties um, all over, minted more over here. I was thinking Riverdale would be a good place to mint properties, and I actually minted them in North Riverdale instead of Riverdale. And then Riverdale ended up being a collection and not North Riverdale. So whoops on that. <laughs> Got some other properties in Morris Park, Pelham Bay, Country Club, Throgs Neck, City Island. So we did a lot on kind of this side of the city. And I didn't buy very many over on this side as far as minting. But then one of my strategies, as you can see, I have properties everywhere, was to pretty much buy properties in every single little neighborhood, which is what these are. And that's where the collections will be. Um, discussed or you'll, you'll have a collection in certain neighborhoods. So a lot of these neighborhoods were very expensive. Some were not so expensive before the collection as people speculated what will be a collection, what won't be. So I had some properties at Country Club that was pretty expensive, did not end up being a collection. Those dropped in price significantly. City Island did end up being a collection. Those stayed pretty high. Uh, there were other areas it had very high prices like Hunts Point. I think West Farms was very high right by the Bronx Zoo. Um, any of these areas down here closer to this downtown area. And I don't know the Bronx. I don't know Berkeley very well at all. I'm from Colorado. But I learned a lot in this game about geography in these cities and just the prices. And all these were very expensive. But a lot of them did not become collections. And the prices dropped significantly when that happened. So we got lucky with some. I had a bunch in Throgs Neck that we minted, the City Island. I had a bunch in Morris Park, Pelham Bay. I don't even know if I'm saying these right, but hopefully. And then um, we bought more in these areas, and most of these did not work out, right? I bought some in Morris Heights. Um, we had some in the University Heights in Claremont Village, and some of these have sold as well. Over time, I've sold some of these I bought. But I basically had properties in pretty much every single area, except um, this bottom area, Port Morris, which didn't end up being a collection, Concourse, <laughs> uh, Riverdale, I don't think we had any Fieldston or Sputin Deville, I don't know. So this one hurt because Riverdale is very expensive, but some of these others were very expensive and went way down in price. So it's really a crapshoot on knowing exactly what's going to happen, what's going to be a collection. And my strategy of buying properties everywhere I don't know if that was very good because it was pretty expensive and most of those properties aren't worth as much as I paid for them when I bought them on the secondary market before the collections were announced. So I did buy one in Mott Haven, which I think is an amazing collection. It became a collection and stuff is really underpriced there still, I think, based on the mint price. Really good deals there. Um, so that was nice. But then buying some in Melrose, up here, all of these pretty much didn't work out very well. Belmont was a collection too. I think I had one there. Um, and 
I minted some in Concourse Village, but not Concourse, so I missed out on that one, but that, yeah, that's part of the game. Um, and then something really interesting, too, before we head to Berkeley and I talk about that strategy, is I, I minted some properties here and got some in Belmont, which is nice. I ended up buying some more in the collection. But I bought a bunch of properties in this area here, trying to uh, buy them on Park Avenue, thinking that might be a collection. And I think I bought this one. I later sold it. But I thought, hey, I minted one on Park Avenue. Great. I didn't mint it. on. It was on 180th Street is on this cross street. So if you're trying to mint properties on a certain street, make sure they're on the street, right? <laughs> That's a big mistake I made. Anyway, Park Avenue didn't end up being a collection, so it didn't matter. It ended up being Grand Concourse, which I really wanted to mint properties on. I just didn't quite make it. Um, Fordham Road. And then there was another one over there. What was it? I forgot. Oh, Sedgwick. Yep. So those were kind of some of the collection streets. So overall, I think it worked out well. I minted a bunch of properties, sold them, made some profit. But I also lost some money by buying so many properties in different areas. So if we go over to Berkeley, I guess so the collection will be announced tomorrow. Um, so they open up the city. And basically a week later, they announce the collection. So people won't know where the collections are until after they've been available for, for a while. So this strategy was something different where I targeted some very specific areas to mint and then bought a whole lot of properties in some more affordable areas just to flip. So we had 20 some properties in Thousand Oaks and Berkeley Hills and sold most of them as you can see. Made some really good profits doing that. And then um, I bought some properties on Telegraph Avenue because it's a collection in the other Oakland part, so I figured it would be here too. I bought a property on 4th Street, actually ended up selling it and bought another one on 4th Street, <laughs> bought some in Ocean View. And um, then I did buy some in Post Corner just or minted these minted some in North Berkeley, which was where the stress test was. So overall, I minted most of these, but I did come through and buy a few more just for pure speculation in West Bray, North Bray, and Cragmont. I doubt these will be collections, but they were pretty cheap properties. They're pretty close to the floor for the entire city of Berkeley. So I thought, why not just buy some in these areas anyway? If they don't become collections, I'm still pretty close to the floor. I can still make some money on the yield. It's not the end of the world. And then um, we bought a couple on the north side with that same strategy, not super expensive. But then kind of looking at, you know, um, downtown Berkeley, south side, they might be collections. These are very, very expensive properties. Huge speculation if they become collections. So, um, you know, if we click on here, I think, well, 61,000. That's one of the cheaper ones I've seen in that area. But it's still... That's pretty expensive because the floor is around 20000 or less. Um, and you're putting a lot of risk that that's going to be a collection. So I haven't been spending money there because even if they do become a collection, if they're not an ultra rare or rare collection, it won't even raise your floor or raise that price up that much higher than the floor anyway. So I don't know if it's worth the risk. Now, you could pay off big if you get some downtown Berkeley properties and that's a, a super rare collection, but you're also paying like we look here, $180,000, $300,000 for these properties. So if they don't become an ultra rare, rare collection, you're losing a whole lot of money on there. And so I decided to place my bets on some other properties with my Berkeley strategy. So most of my Berkeley strategy for the collections is banking on Telegraph Road, since it was in a, another collection. I've literally bought and sold like five properties on that road already. We have four there now. One on 4th Street, just hoping that works out. One on Ocean View, again, super duper expensive area. And I'm just going to keep that one there. Um, we have some on Hearst Street, which may or may not be a collection. I think that's a long shot. And then just some other properties in the cheap neighborhood. So we're not going high risk on downtown or south side or University of California, Berkeley, where they're very expensive. Those might pay off for people. I hope they do. But um, we're just staying with a more conservative route for the other collections for right now. Now the Telegraph Road, uh, I've spent a fair amount of money on those. Those are 100,000 plus, so that is a little bit riskier. But again, like I said, I, I just think they have to continue that as a collection since it was a collection in Oakland, and we'll see how that works out. So those are kind of my two strategies versus the Bronx and Berkeley. Uh, I'm more on flipping, buying and selling before the collections are announced in Berkeley than I was in the Bronx. The Bronx was kind of like buying everything and just hoping a bunch of them were in collections. It, I did okay on some, but I think it probably cost me more money than I actually made doing that. 
Here it's more about buying, selling um, before the collections and then keeping a few strategic areas that may work out here in the future. Oh, one thing I almost forgot to mention, right? If you go to the Upland Discord channel, there's a ton of great information on there. They have lots of updates on there. You should be receiving updates as well when you log on to the game and, and get their updates. But before the collections are announced, it's probably a good idea to take all your properties off the market. Don't have them listed for sale because if you do have some that end up in an ultra rare collection or on a special street and you weren't thinking about it or didn't know it to come up, um, they might, or you might actually sell those properties for way cheaper than they're worth. Once those collections are announced, I'm sure there's going to be people jumping to try and buy properties that were listed and are much cheaper than they should be. So try to take all your properties off the market before those collections are announced. And I think it's 8 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow. Don't quote me on that. Please double check that. But I think that's what time they're announcing those collections. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Love to hear what you think. Love to see the comments, the likes, all that great stuff. And um, like I said, I have a real real estate channel as well. Invest for more. And uh, we'll be back soon.